Welcome to Join News Prime with me, Samuel Kojobre, is coming to you live from our studio here in Kokomlemli, Accra. We're live on DSTV Channel 421, Go TV Channel 144, and live around the world on myjoyonline.com. This news is also live on Joy Prime. Now, coming up, this hour, Ghana's embassy in Turkey links up with rescue teams on a frantic search for the whereabouts of former Black Stars winger Christian Achu, reportedly missing 26 hours after his rescue from 7.8 magnitude quake rubble. Meanwhile, the death toll surpasses 11,000 as the Turkish government receives international support to, to help with rescue efforts following the collapse of over 5,000 buildings. Now also coming up in this bulletin, Swami constituency youth organizer of the NDC charged and detained by police in the Ashanti region for inciting political violence. Details as the governing new patriotic party calls for his immediate prosecution. Now also coming up in this bulletin, MP for Boko Central, Mahama Yarga and Defence Minister Dominic Nitiwul clash in Parliament over recent killings in Boko. Let's be very careful who we choose to talk for in Boko. I want to plead with you, Pope. Until the soldiers were complaining that you, the, the Defence Minister and the Interior Minister, had never visited them. And I brought the complaint to you. Now, you sit here and tell me. We have details as the MP calls on Parliament to take keen interest in the violence in the area and investigate the killings. I call on Parliament to look into the military brutalities and their operational style in Boku. I have petitioned the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice to address these specific egregious human rights violations occasioned by these cold-blooded executions by the soldiers of the 10 citizens of Boku. Now, both Kusasi and Mambrisi factions in Boko have this week expressed their anger and frustrations at the Upper East Regional Security Council for the manner in which the security of Boko is being handled. Both factions believe that the security agencies and political leaders, including the MPs, are scratching around the surface and not dealing with the real threat of the peace and security of Boko. On Monday, the regional minister, Stephen Yakubu and Rexag, met uh, uh, the Kosasis and Mampuses separately in their various areas to listen to their concerns as he appealed to them to give peace a chance following the killing of eight people for which the military was accused last week. Correspondent Albert Sorry traveled with the Regional Security Council to Boko and our report. The Upper East Regional Minister, Stephen Yakubu, led the Regional Security Council to Boko with one mission in mind, to try one more time to broker peace between the Kusasi and Mampusi ethnic groups which have been involved in a chieftaincy dispute for many years now that has resulted in the loss of hundreds of lives. Last week, eight people were killed in an incident described by natives of the Zorgen suburb of Boko as an attack on innocent civilians by the military charged with the duty of maintaining peace in the volatile town. The Ghana Armed Forces later denied the allegations in a press statement. As head of the Regional Security Council, the Regional Minister must lead investigations into the incident, but first he needs to calm the people down. He arrives at Boko at the palace of the paramount chief, Nabah Asigri Aburago Azoka II, and makes this passionate appeal to the chief and his elders and people. We all know banks have closed, schools have closed, hospitals have closed, commercial activity is completely almost zero. People are scared. What are we doing? Let us seek peace. The minister then gave an opportunity for representatives of the Ghana Health Services and the Ghana Education Service who were part of the entourage to talk to the people about how the conflict was affecting these sectors in the Boko municipality. In Boko alone, we have lost as many as 70 of mothers who are dying because they wish they could get access to health workers to be able to give them timely health interventions. But whilst the rep from the Ghana Education Service was speaking, sporadic gunfire suddenly 
could be heard in the distant atmosphere. But in 2022, inter-district transfers alone was nine, 95. 95 left Boko municipality to other districts in the region. The regional minister, Stephen Yakubu, met the elders and people of the Mamprusi faction. He made the same appeal as before. Let's put our guns down. Let's talk. Let's seek peace. The Mamprusis too did not hide their feelings about how the government was handling the security situation in Boko. The security, they are here. They will tell you they know where the problems are coming from. But why is it that they cannot map our strategy to ensure that this bandit will not continue to disturb the peace that we are enjoying in Boko? It's because of politics. And we always blame you, regional minister, as head of Rexec. Every day I blame you. I'm talking with people's lives. The salmon paid over 300 and something police were deployed in Boku for the celebration of Salmon Pit Festival. But just after the celebration of the Salmon Pit Festival, we don't even know when the police left Boku. This was the Upper East Regional Minister's response after hearing all sides. I can assure you that we have heard you. We were expecting all what you have told us. We were expecting to be angry. We are expecting you to be telling us this. Yes. But we can tell you that we are not sleeping. We are doing all what we can to bring peace to Boko. As we departed Boko, the general atmosphere was calm and people appeared to be going about their everyday life activities. But one could almost reach out and touch the tension in the air. Albert Sorry, Joy News, Boko. On the same issue, there was a fierce clash in Parliament between MP for Boko Central, Mahama Yariga, and Defence Minister Dominic Nitiul over the recent killings in Boko. Mahama Yariga was unhappy that the Defence Minister had suggested he had shown little commitment to resolving the conflict in the area. He was calling for a parliamentary probe into the recent killings. Parliamentary Affairs Correspondent Kweku Asante now reports. Despite petitioning Shraj to investigate the matter, Mahama Yaraga, in a statement on the floor of the House, called for Parliament to initiate a probe of its own. However, I call on Parliament to look into the military brutalities and their operational style in Boku. I have petitioned the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice to address these specific egregious human rights violations occasioned by these cold-blooded executions by the soldiers of the 10 citizens of Boku. We should be a community governed by laws and not the might of guns. Commenting on this statement, ranking member on the Defense and Interior Committee, James Agalga, called for the conflict to be treated as a national security issue, whilst Deputy Majority Leader Fenyo Markin warned against politicization of the conflict. It is not just a conflict between Pusazis and Mount Prusis. It is a crisis which has escalated to the point where we need to treat the Boko issue now as a national one and give it national attention. On that note, Mr. Speaker, I would appeal for calm once again. This calls for our very reasonable approach to the problem, not to be very emotional, not to attempt to even do politics with it and by extension attack the government. Defense Minister Dominic Nitti will explain government will do all it can to resolve the conflict. And Mr. Speaker, there have been political will from the Nana Adodankwa Akufado government. So let not be said that there's not been political will. Let's be very careful who we choose to talk for in Boku. I want to plead with you, Pope. That's why, Honorable Ayaga, I told you, come to the office and let me sit with you with the military government and let's discuss it. I told you before, three days ago, on Monday. Maybe if we had come and we start, maybe this statement would not have been made. Until the soldiers were complaining that you, the, the defense minister and the interior minister, had never visited them. And I brought the complaint to you. Now, you sit here and tell me that, that the soldiers, the soldiers and the police were complaining that you were never visiting them. 
You brought them to come, they are being exposed to death, and you, their commander, never step foot there to see them. Please, let's not talk personal here. I have sat down quietly and listened, not because I don't have responses. So, Speaker, why they kill the, the people? I'm pleading with you, go there. Go and see with your naked eyes. And I'm not choosing to speak for only Kusasis. That last statement you made, that we should be careful who we speak for. Please, I understand everything that you are saying there. I'm not speaking only for Kusasis. I'm speaking because people that ought not to have been killed were killed. The recent killings in Boko came up again on the floor of the house today with MP for the area clashing with the defense minister over some allegations that have been made by the minister. The MP was asking parliament to investigate the matter, but the Speaker of Parliament has now decided that because Shraj and the police are already investigating this matter, parliament should stay any such investigation until such a time that it will be very necessary. But the violence is still happening. Indeed, we heard there from the defense minister saying that just last dawn, there are about 10 hours of gunshot exchanges between people that the military and the police are yet to identify. And the violence is getting out of hand. Members of parliament are calling for this situation to be declared a national security situation so that the state can marshal all its resources to the area to help deal with the violence. Reporting for Joy News, Kwiku Asante from Parliament House, Accra. Now, the Swami Constituency Youth Organizer of the NDC has been charged and detained by the police in the Asante region for inciting political violence. Razak Kwampa, in an interview with the Kumasi-based TV station, urged the NDC supporters to attack NPP supporters during the 2024 elections. The original leadership of the National Democratic Congress earlier today handed Razak Kwampa to the police for investigation. This comes after a police statement declaring him wanted. Nene Aljima has more in the following report. In a video interview that has gone viral, the suspect, Razak Kwampa, is heard advising party supporters to subscribe to violence in wrestling power from the new patriotic party. When you are going, you should prepare yourself. But men found for the NDC in the MPP Nibi or Baby and Savannah would be a bono. I'm a party now in a power. So two and over two abono. I'm a NDC about power to bono. The police issued a statement declaring the suspect wanted. Party executives following this visited the Ashanti Regional Police Command, assured of willingness to produce the suspect to the police. On Wednesday, the party executives, in company of some supporters, handed over Razak Kwampa to the police. They were referred to the Central District Police Station under whose jurisdiction the case fell. The suspect, after his caution statement, was charged with offensive conduct. Lawyer Evans Amankwa says the suspect stands by his words in the video. Our brother, the youth organizer for Swami Constituency, is in high spirit. In fact, he is rather encouraging us that we should leave him to be here because he meant what he said. He is not in any way perturbed about it, but he has no intention of destabilizing the peace of this nation. That is not his intentions. Wow. Wow. That has never been an intention, and that is his statement. He was encouraging the people of Swami constituency, the kind of maltreatment that MP people have been meted to the people of NDC in Swami constituency, and he was encouraging them that they should, they should fortify themselves coming the 2024 elections because anything can happen, and for that matter, they should be prepared to defend themselves. And that is exactly what he said. So anything apart from that is misinterpretation of his words in the video. The NDC wants the police to arrest all persons who make similar statements. National organizer Joseph Yamin says there are similar statements that have not gotten similar reaction from the police. What we're expecting them to do is to extend equal measure to the MPP. They arrested, okay, we brought him, 
because they intercepted a viral video. As I speak on my phone, I have four viral, I mean videos that will go viral any moment from now, from the MPP side. And we're expecting the IGP to issue a statement for the arrest of these MPP individuals. Yes. We're expecting it from tomorrow. Mm -hmm. If they can go after NDC people because they have intercepted viral videos, then they should be prepared to pick the MPP before we make a statement. But I'm very sure that tomorrow the court will have no, no powers to detain our brother because the court deals with precedents. Kennedy and Japan made a statement some time back and declared war in this country. The court said he had no locals, even a member of parliament, somebody who is vying to be a flag bearer of a political party. If the court says he has no locals, how much more a constituency you to organize and Meanwhile, the suspect, Razak Kwampa, who is in police custody, will be put before the Asokari Mampon District Court on Thursday. Nanaya Ojima reporting. Now, the governing New Patriotic Party is demanding the immediate prosecution of the NDC Swami Youth Organizer. Speaking at a press conference at the party's headquarters, the MPP National Communications Director, Richard Anyaba, urged the NDC to sack and denounce the insightful statement made by Razak Kwampa. Ladies and gentlemen, we believe this about the NDC, that the statement that the youth organizer made is not in isolation, or did he misspoke? He is clear-eyed about what he was saying. His remarks reflect the culture and ethos of the NDC. We expect the police and the courts to bring the, the Swami Youth Organizer to justice very quickly to deter others who might be harboring similar violent and delinquent thoughts in the NDC. We demand the NDC to un unreservedly disavow disassociate and expel this young man from their party without delay. That's the only point you can begin to take the NDC seriously about these comments that the young man has made as though that they are not shielding him and they really want to discourage such commentary in our politics. Nothing short of this, ladies and gentlemen, will suffice. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot discard or discount these utterances as vain talk. This individual you just heard is coherent. It clearly appears that he knows what he's saying and understands what he's saying and knows what outcome he's expecting. It is dangerous, to put it mildly. Ladies and gentlemen, what is more dangerous, perhaps more egregious, is the NDC's failure to condemn and disassociate itself from the statements, but rather chooses to rationalize it. We cannot accept this as an ordinary misguided statement because, as I indicated earlier, it is too coherent to be taken less seriously. Besides, we believe his threats are not in isolation. He is inspired by the MD NDC's presumptive leader, the former President John Dramani Mahama, who publicly touted the NDC's credentials, quote, NDC has revolutionary roots, and when it comes to unleashing violence, no one can beat us to it. Indeed, former President John Dramani Mahama and the NDC demonstrated this through their actions after the loss of the 2020 presidential elections. Now to other stories now. There's a push for a full-scale forensic and pathological probe into the circumstances leading to the death of 32-year-old Shadrach Alu. Now the police say his airway was blocked with a post-mortem examination revealing eight bags of cannabis were, were retrieved from his throat. Family of the deceased say this is an attempt to divert attention from the fact that Shadrach was brutalized by the police causing his death. Joseph Akable reports. They can't, tell, this, this thing. They can't tell, they can tell us that nobody uh, uh, beats my brother to death. A distressed perpetual DDA cannot simply accept the latest from the police. She's busily speaking on the phone to friends and family members who are surprised and need answers. The latest updates from the police claim the family had consented for an autopsy to be conducted. 
this examination is said to have revealed that Shedrach died as a result of a blocking of his airway. Eight bags of cannabis are said to have been retrieved from his throat. The family first disputes the claim of having consented for the autopsy to be conducted. They convinced my family to, be, uh, to, to understand. So some of them agreed eventually? Yeah, yeah. I was not around. They, according to that, my sister, no, she said, the doctor said she's, he will not be around today. He's traveling. And I told, him, uh, I told her that he, he is not the only uh, police doctor that can uh, operate on my brother. So if he is traveling, let him go. For the sake of justice, let him go. Then they should find another doc doctor that will uh, collaborate with our own doctor. What is the crime in this one? What is the rush for? So therefore, they eventually did the uh, uh, autopsy. Perpetual alleges the cannabis could have been planted. If they are saying that they have done all investigations and whatever, he swallowed uh, a weed in uh, which is uh, wrapped in rubber. The, then they, fo they found uh, eight folded wheat inside. Maybe some gunner for say wheat they in kuma. Wheat obi to me many wheat rubber rubber in kuma to me many easy sir. Ah, the time that he was swallowing it, uh, 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 have they given us a, a, a footage of that time he was trying uh, swallowing the wheat, and he didn't struggle. He swallowed the wheat easily like that. So my stand is, because our, uh, they didn't wait for our doc doctor to come inside the, uh, the, uh, the operation, I will not accept it. My family too, they are saying they will not accept whatever they brought out. Or somebody planted the weed inside his throat so that when our lawyer will be standing there, he will see that, oh, I've seen weed. I mean, that, that's a quite a serious allegation. Yes, I'm, I'm saying it. So they should provide how he was swallowing it. Because the whole, the whole uh, for justice to prevail, the whole more... The, uh, the, uh, they have a uh, CCTV camera everywhere. And they are saying they captured all the ashes. So they should prove where the guy was able to swallow that substance without struggling, without choking. The fight for justice continues as legal action against the attorney general and the police service remains the next line of action. We are taking them to court. And they will hear from us because we are not buying this. We indicated that they should allow us to uh, bring our own doctor. And they said the doctor that, uh, the police doctor is that is going to do the autopsy is traveling. So they don't have patience for us to bring a, a doctor. Even that day, the time they, they, yesterday, the time they gave us was too early. Early in the morning, 6 o'clock. It can be that our doctor was stuck in uh, traffic. What is the rush for? What do you want to cover? Like, wh wh who are you covering up for? So we are, the, the, we are still demanding justice. They, they can't tell us that what they have uh, brought out is the, 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 the real fact of the issue. So everybody should forget the evidences we have, we have seen in, uh, on social media and all that. Now, the Ghanaian embassy in Turkey is working all contact to reach former Black Stars winger, Christian Achu, who was reportedly rescued from a 7.8 magnitude quake that struck part of Turkey and Syria. The winger initially went missing 26 hours after the first quake hit Turkey till Turkish media confirmed his rescue. Reporter Yagesh Sabunchoglu told Joy Sports the winger's health was being monitored, but uncertainty set in when it emerged that the Ghana embassy and its club couldn't trace the health facility it was taken to. The team doctor, uh, Hatay Spo, who said at the moment they are con uh, concluding that Christian Achu is not the one who was found on Monday night. Gobi Kavechi, a test for club doctor, said, and there's a quote that he said uh, in, in some, you know, uh, shortly, uh, in some, some a few moments ago, he said, now they are not able to trace where he is, and at the moment they are considering that the team director uh, and him cannot be found, and it, it's an unfortunate incident. Now, uh, Muftao Nabila, of uh, Joy Sports joins me in studio with more on this. Muftal, what more do we know on this? Two conflicting reports mm. coming in just this evening. Mm. The CNN says okay. he's in stable con uh, condition in the hospital. The CNN says so. CNN, that's what the CNN is reporting. Mm. The BBC says no news yet per the manager of the club. And let me quote him, he says that if they were in the hospital, mm. don't you think I would share this with you? Please don't be sure that he survived. Um, this should not be written 
as he survived. This is the manager of Hataya Spa, uh, being six, quoted six by... Six this what This is what he's saying. Mm -hmm. um, the manager of uh, Hataya Spa, uh, Volkan Demirel, he, he's quoted by the BBC to have said that mm. there is no news yet. In interacting with media, he said if they were in a hospital, that is in addition to the sporting director of the club, mm -hmm. if they were in a hospital, don't you think I would share this with you? He went further to say that please don't be sure that he survived. Wow. They, he added that this should not be written as he survived. But the CNN, as I mentioned, also reported something different. The mm -hmm. CNN, they say that former Ghana soccer star in stable condition mm -hmm. after being rescued. And this was just about two hours ago. So these are reports that are coming in from two uh, global uh, media organizations uh, contradicting each other. But one would say that, considering the fact that the BBC is quoting uh, the manager of Hataya Sport, it, 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 uh, it, it says a lot. And also considering the fact that in the last couple of hours, uh, we've not had um, very accurate reports in terms of what has happened. And in fact, I've had the, inf uh, the privilege of speaking to people who are close to Christian Achu. I've spoken to not less than three people. Mm. And uh, what they all tell me is that they were relying on the information they had from uh, the club. And in fact, even the Ghana Football Association yesterday also said that they had gotten information that the player had been rescued. Mm -hmm. The Confederation of African Football, CAF, also tweeted that they had gotten information that the player has been rescued. All for us to be told by the Ghana Embassy that uh, they cannot trace the facility where he's been taken to. And even for the vice president of the club, Mustafa Ozad, to come back and tell us that it's a mistaken identity. Mm -hmm. So. It's quite difficult to appreciate what is currently happening, considering the fact that Christian Achu is one of the famous names when, it's come, when it comes to uh, Turkish football recently. Because if you take a look at what the, uh, he's done in his career in the Premier League, uh, playing for Ghana at the FIFA World Cup, playing at the African Cup of Nations, he's actually a big name. Yeah. And I'm not sure that anyone would see Christian Achu and not know that this is uh, Christian Achu. For, for them to tell her that it's a mistaken identity, mm -hmm. It's pretty, pretty difficult. I remember when I was having a, a conversation with a manager of Achu just this evening, he was telling me that it's quite difficult for, for the entire family. And he even said, in fact, he doesn't want to engage the family too much because when you do that, you, you, you take their mind to, to certain areas that they wouldn't want to think about. And, and I, I under, understood him when he told me that and, uh, on the telephone uh, conversation I had with him before before coming on air. They were all very confident. And in, and in fact, one thing he mentioned was that it was their follow-up question of where they could locate Christian Achu. That was what led to the club uh, realizing that, indeed, uh, they've, they've not gotten Christian mm -hmm. Achu yet. Mm -hmm. So at this point, they, they have accepted that Christian Achu has not been found yet, okay. probably still under the rubble. Mm -hmm. And they are okay. hoping that uh, there will be something positive, positive. anytime soon. Yeah. In fact, Sabun Choglu, who is a Turkish. Welcome back from the break. Now, some motorists who apply the Accra Tama motorway are calling on government to remove their dilapidated and abandoned toll booth stores that sit in the middle of the road. At least two of these stores have been run down by vehicles in 2022 alone, resulting in several casualties. Meanwhile, our checks show that some homeless persons have found shelter in the booth. Michael Ashley has more in our latest episode of our series on the motorway down to the deadly highway. Steady 2022, a man diesel truck from Tema crashed into one of the tow boots while heading towards the car. Here you are doing entrance now. Then a small car be white, now I'm in the wall, out of the way. You know, I said, I'm going to have a drive on. What's a good man? I'm going to have a good man. I'm going to have Musa notes that the rate of accidents around the tow boot has increased since it was shut down. You know, this tow boot here, so far since its closure, there have been more than 100 accidents, of which at least close to 50 individuals have already died here. It 
at the Accra bound tow area, it is business as usual. The long trucks park dangerously close to the road. Some are busy inspecting their vehicles, whereas many others take a nap while waiting for the night. The boots have been left to wear. Wires hang down dangerously. Some key installations have either been removed or beggled. With no lights, the boot is dark at night. The stalls now serve as shelter for many who seek it. I slept inside the two boots. Which of them? The second room. For about two months now. At the Tema Bound Tow area, we met James Edu Nyama. It appears James is not alone. We found many more people taking shelter in and around the booth. As an express motorway, the number of U turns were restricted. But over the years, many illegal U turns have sprung up. It is a common feature along the entire stretch of the motorway. <laughs> Motorcycle riders and vehicles alike. At the Tema Bound tow boot, we found one of such illegal passages. A man guards the pathway, waiting for customers. The drivers will only be allowed when they have given something. They wait patiently for an opening, then drive against traffic onto the road, putting the lives of other commuters at risk. Not one, not two, but many people use that route. In February 2022, the government announced novel plans to refurbish the abandoned boots. We have come out with a lot of suggestions. We even want to refurbish all those uh, tow boot structures to provide you know, proper and decent washrooms, for instance, for you know, uh, the use by motorists. Later, Roots Minister Mwakwata changed his mind. Among others, I said the ministry has plans, the government has plans. We are thinking of a, a, a lot of uh, ways to put the tow boots. Until then, some motorists think the boots should be removed. You see, so if the issue is about them quitting it, then it's better they have to demolish all these things so that the cars will get free chances to move. That is my point of view. They should get free chance to move. But sometimes they get there and they get confused. They will miss their lane and they will just go and crash up and hit one of the tobos. Now, the National Road Safety Authority has undertaken a three-day exercise to check on the school buses that transport students to private schools in the Malangbawe neighborhood. This effort is in response to a National Road Safety Authority order that some buses providing transportation for primary schools throughout the nation are unfit for their intended use. The buses generally have the appearance of being in rooms with poor tires, unbelted seats, and retro, uh, retro reflective tapes. Children, bus passengers, and young pedestrians are all thought to be at increased risk of a harm, death, and injury in road traffic accident as a result of these circumstances. There is more in this report by Jacqueline and Soma Yeboah. The National Road Safety Authority says it has observed that some buses transporting school children across the country are not fit for purpose. Generally, some of the buses appear to be rickety, and some are seats without seat belts, and many more. Today, a team from the National Road Safety Authority are here to inspect the buses to discuss the faults that they find with these buses and to give recommendation to the head teachers. And no one should sit here, but it seems they are managing this place for students to sit. So once you found these things out, something like this out, what do you intend to do? Because this time around, you are not going to be here and you are still going to continue to use this with the students. Yeah, so what we'll do is that we report to them. 
the, 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 the transport manager and then they will do something about it. They will make sure that no students will sit here. Uh, and then um, looking at how the condition of the bus, some, some portion of the seats are not functioning. Looking at uh, the seat belt. Sure. This one, they are not even using. You can see yeah, that dust. It's, it's dust. Yeah, right. they are not using. But which means they, they are supposed to use it all right, but they are not using. Uh, okay. So we are from National Road Safety. And we are doing checks on your car. So far, um, what we've seen is that there are some places where students are not supposed to sit, but they are sitting. You see where uh, the engine, yeah, when yeah, you enter, yeah, they are not supposed to sit there. Okay. But you've put in some. Uh, uh, pushing for students to sit on, yeah. which is not safe. Yeah, and then uh, we have seen that we are having a fire extinguisher yeah. and then first aid box. Because you were not here, we decided to check. And then check the seat, they are, when, the seat, when, the student, when they sit on the seat, they are supposed to have a seat belt. Do you get it? But the seat belt is there, but you are not using. Uh -huh. it's not you, are you are not using the oil. No, we've checked, we've seen that. Sit belt. The authority has been given mandate to, for institutional compliance. So the authority is supposed to ensure that every institution complies with the road safety regulations. And also we realize that Last year, we gave a directive to all schools to make sure that their buses are in order. We also informed them that there should be an adult who will be in the bus. Now be mindful where you buy your food stuff from. That's the caution from the Accra Metropolitan Assembly Environmental Health Team as they storm the Abu Bleshi market for the second time in seven days. In our latest edition of the Joy Clean Ghana campaign, some traders were selling their wares close to the open drains that were choked. According to the team lead, Florence Cucci, uh, selling food staff under such conditions exposes them to cross-contamination and may lead to food poisoning. There's more in the following report. <laughs> Sounds of AMA sanitation officials in a tussle with some recalcitrant traders at Agbebuloshi. A week before that, they were sacked from the shoulders of the road and cautioned not to sell their wares on open drains. That did not end well. It ensued in a fight which the traders seemed to have won. They rescued their seized food stuff from the AMA. Their victory was, however, short-lived. The Assembly Tax Force has returned, this time with more personnel who are up to the task. With the help of the police, the defiant traders were arrested and their wares were confiscated. Here is head of the AMA Environmental and Sanitation Team, Florence Cucci. It's better to prevent it than to let it happen before we look for remedies to it. So this morning, we picked those boys who take action against the owner. Whatever nice action we need to take against the owner, we'll take against the owner. If the young will be given back, we'll give it back. If it's not be given back, to, we'll give it to the, uh, the children's home. So that is what we are doing. Since as at now, there's no owner. It means the yam is for the state. Some traders took to their heels after seeing the tax force. So their wares were taken instant, including boxes of tomatoes, pepper, tubers of yam and livestock hide. Many others were asked to clean their surroundings. At the end of the day, 20 people were picked up, but Florence Cucci says it is only the beginning. We don't want to put the health of people who are coming into Accra, the city centre to come and shop and go home in danger. We want anybody who comes in here, have come in here and shop safely and go back safely so that the economy can grow for us to have a harness country. For Joy News, Michael Ashali. And Becky Bex is already in the house. Yes. Hi, Becky. Hello to you, Brace. Uh, let's uh, begin on a sad note. Mm. Uh, it's been five years, five years already. That's like, you know, 
surprising uh, that Ebony left us uh, in the showbiz industry. So oh. on uh, February 8, 2018, Ghanaians were hit with the news of the late Rough Town record signee Ebony Rain's death. The sensational singer born Priscilla Opoku Kwarteng died in a fatal road accident on the Sunyani Kumasi Road. She was traveling to Accra after visiting her mother in the Bono region. Ebony passed away alongside two other persons. Her friend, only identified as Frankie, and a military officer identified as Francis Achuvondi. However, the driver of the vehicle escaped oh. death. Five years on, memories of the singer still are still fresh in the minds of fans celebrating Ebony on her death anniversary. Some say they miss her, while others pray for her. So uh, there was a little visit to... Mm. The tomb. Uh, the tomb by mm. his her family. Mm. Let's take a look at that. May her soul continue to rest in perfect peace. Let's move away and talk about. Um, you should have played Mami Shay. Yeah, that's your favorite song. Yeah. Hopefully, after the one of the most beautiful pieces of songs. Piece. Yeah. I've, I've probably. Yeah. Piece of song that I've probably listened to. Listened to. to. The, the message in there. Right. And it didn't. It didn't take long when mm. on, before she she passed Past, after that song. Yeah. She took away something, that, that yeah, lady. And, and uh, she will continue be, to be remembered by mm. all loved ones and everybody. Uh, let's talk about Kwabena, Kwabena. You know mm. that the Vitamilk uh, Love concert is happening this weekend. Mm. And Kwabena, Kwabena is telling all of us that he is ready. So you have to be ready to get your tickets and know where exactly the event is happening. So Kwabna, Kwabna right there. Yeah. Uh, we're giving out tickets. Yeah. We have five tickets to give out to our lovely viewers. So uh, there's something for, we have for, to do. But obviously there's something you have to do. Mm. Uh, all you have to do is to, you know, get into our inbox, uh, Joy News, Joy FM, any of our inboxes, and mm. tell me what my full name is. Exactly. Should I give it? You know, no, to... no, no. That's it's five. Just five tickets. I mean, just oh, go right. My... It's like RDT. Just go. Don't do that. Just go yeah. right. Right. What my anything. full name is mm -hmm. in that inbox will come. Uh, uh, we'll give but, you. That but we should give a caveat. Your friends are not part of this. No, no. Of course, the, these these are for you know just Joy Prime, Joy News, Joy Prime mm -hmm. uh, viewers okay. only. But uh, we have Prime Movie Box this evening, and yeah. guess which movie? Made that list. Wow. So on the 14th of February, you know where you should be. If you don't have anybody to go with, I'm so sorry for you. But you can still get tickets. Uh, do you want to give out tickets? Uh, well, someone tell us your full name. I mean, my full name is known. Your full name. They should okay. go into our... Uh, yeah, yeah, so... But I gave you don't have anybody. Well, I can manage to go with like two people. Okay. So one here, one here. Yeah. You got company, oh, so all right, then. please. Um, and and that's how we, you know, wrap up uh, today's bulletin. Thank you so much for your company. But remember, there is more news on myjoyonline.com. My name is Samuel Kojo Brace. My name is Becky. All right.